violence? Well, they are sports. There's violence in football, violence in hockey, the violence in driving an automobile. We don't stop driving automobiles. Let's make them safer. Let's find rules. They uh, boxing to uh, could be better uh, protections, right? better protection, headgears, better protection, uh, uh, athletic belts, so forth and all. Let's make the sport safer. But I do believe their their uh, training process for the uh, the body, which is important to the mind, and I believe that athletics are important in our country. Uh, it, it, it teaches children, it teaches them sportsmanship. It's not only the, the, the old story, you've got to win. No, you don't have to win. No. You try to win, but if you don't win, so what? Be out there for the fun of it, enjoy yourself. If you happen to be an exceptional athlete and you get into it professionally, that's fine. But once again, always have something to fall back on. So Captain. there may be a certain amount of violence, but believe me, some of those shows out there that you watch on cable and so on, which I'm not watching cable, they're much more violent than what goes Listen, on today. Relating to fun, you said the word fun. We're going to have a little fun right now. My good friend Mark Birnbaum has one ambition to have you watch his and listen to his rendition of 12th Street Reg. This guy is, is unbelievable. Plays I mean, with I, oh, plays with kidding? all his fingers, too. Plays. You're, you're, going, to enjoy great. It. you're going to enjoy it watching uh, these words, and you're going to enjoy watching uh, Mr. Birnbaum play something special for Captain Albano and Terrific. for you. Something ragtimey. Stay here with us. Be right back. telling the one and only Captain Lou and the one and only Tommy Ritacco and the one and only Richard Ornstein that my good friend Sonny Schwartz writes in the Atlantic City Press that uh, the band called Just Us uh, at the Trump Taj Mahal is the number one show band in the country. That's uh, quite a tribute, gentlemen. A lot of talk about them, Joe, all over the country. They said these guys are great, they're unbelievable, I've never seen anything like it. And I'm right here next to them and say it's true. <laughs> I've seen them and they are great. And I had to put you and me alongside good looking fellas to ruin our day, right? <laughs> kill our day. Wow. Boy, oh boy. Look Brothers, at right? You are? That's correct. I'm Joe Ventry. And I'm Lou Ventry. Joe and Lou Ventry. Right. Would you guys mind moving down a little bit? <laughs> look, look at me and then they look at these guys. Boy, this is, this is going to kill your show. Gentlemen, have you met Donald Trump out there? Yes, we have. We've met him quite a few times. Oh, a real yes. gentleman. Real nice man. A real gentleman. He was very nice to us, you know. Just Us, what does that mean? How did that title come into being, Just Us? Well, originally, a long time ago, the name of the band was Us, and uh, we had gained members and lost members, and we dwindled it down a while. We said, uh, it's just us now, and that stuck. You want to know something? I was saying the other day that it, it, it used to be a long time between inventions, like, like from black and white TV to color TV, and then from 78 to 33 LPs, you know, but, but, but now they're coming one after the other. I'm, I'm thinking now about, about, about how, how obsolete uh, LPs became now because That's of right. CDs, but do you think the consumer is getting kind of a runaround now? Are they, are they, uh, this built-in obsolescence that we've got to buy, that our equipment and our collections become become outmoded now overnight? What's of course, that's that's the way it is. It's also in instruments. Really? You can buy a keyboard today, and <laughs> two weeks later, that's obsolete, yeah. and, and you can't use it <laughs> what anymore. What do you think, Captain? That's amazing, right? <laughs> you, got thing, Joe. you know, getting back to this yeah. uh, Taj Mahal, Taj Joe, Mahal. you're talking about, this is an amazing, mm -hmm. I mean, down in Atlantic City, you're talking about Donald Trump, and they said he's a great guy. I got to say, he is a great guy. I met Donald Trump some years ago, that's and right. to me, one of the finest gentlemen around, and Donald Trump, man, he's on the way, and with the Taj Mahal, believe me, folks, he's on the way and up. if he booked just he us... He is up. He's not on the way anyway. He's a great guy. just us, he's got good taste. That's right. <laughs> What's, uh, name the band, name your style. You do some nostalgia, I hope? You do a bit of... A... Well, we sure, we do. Uh, we do revival, oldies revival. We do a little bit of everything, really. But when you play down in uh, a place as the Taj Mahal, it gives you more of an opportunity to do anything. It's, it's not a select audience, because people from all over the country and people from uh, different areas that like all kind of music, rather than in the New York area, there's a certain style of music that people like, or <coughs> in the Midwest, there's a certain style. There is a, a group of people that are from all over the country. It makes it easier to do whatever you want. But you see good music and good lyrics maybe coming back a little bit? You see? Yes, I certainly hope so, because there was a time in music that uh, the disco craze, nothing against disco, but yeah. uh, when it was actually we didn't have any anything to do. Now, actually, you got your two brothers, and then there are five other people There's in the five band. other pe people in the, in the group. Band. Yeah, that's we great. Somebody showed me a videotape of Linda Ronstead when she used to come on this program. She, Linda Ronstead was then the ultimate rock and roller. Right. And now she's uh, almost full-time nostalgia. So yeah. it's got yeah. to be some kind of handwriting on the wall, right? Yeah, that's true. Ready for some rock and roll trivia? I've asked Mr. Ornstein, okay, who's okay. our <laughs> king of trivia, to give this us some rock. This guy's tough. This guy's uh -oh. tough. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We're, we're in trouble now. I think I'm, I think I'm going to meet my match today. Oh. Gold-plated. They have you with them, Captain. Okay. <laughs> you have the answer. I'm going to manage it, Rich. Go ahead. Who sang the original hit of Rock and Robin in the late 1950s? The and Rays? No, no. The, the Rays had another song. Uh, that was... Bobby. 
What group did Johnny Maestro sing with before the Brooklyn Bridge, and what was his very, very first hit record? The Crest. That's right. Was the group. And his first hit record was the Sixteen Candles. The Sixteen Candles was a big hit, but before that, it was not as big as Sixteen Candles. The sweetest one and My Juanita. It was My Juanita, right? We do My Juanita. It's amazing. <laughs> See, there you go. We now you'll know. Juanita. Name the original lead singers of the the lead singer of the Platters. My Tony friends. Tony Williams. Right. Very Tony good. Tony Williams. Tony That's Williams. right. Yes. That's know this stuff. Before Chuck Jackson went solo and he had I Don't Want to Cry Any Day Now, who? What group was he the lead singer of? We give up. You got, you got us on that one. That was Whispering Bells, the Devil Vikings. Whispering the Devil Vikings. Oh, that's right. Okay. Earl Speedo Carroll from Speedo and the Cadillacs. What group did he sing with for over 20 years after the Cadillacs, after he had his big hit record? Well, we <laughs> Joe Elastic. <laughs> you got me. No, Joe no. Elastic and the Rubber Band. That was close. <laughs> that was close. I'll give you the song, Love Potion Number no. 9. He sang the lead in that song. Oh, okay. Love Potion Number no. 9. And they had a big song called the Yakety Yak. Oh, the yeah, the yeah, the ghost ghost that's, that's it. That's right, the ghost. Yeah. And uh, Frankie Lyman, the teenagers, had a smash hit in 1956. He was about 13 years old. What was the name of that big, big hit? Wonderful Swarm Love. That's it. Very good. I say bring back Georgie yeah, Jessica. Bring back Georgie Jessica. Listen, my go. good friend Tommy Ritacco, who sings Russ Colombo songs, makes the rounds of flea markets and whatever he's in the area. I tell him <laughs> to show some of the items that he's captured, and he has captured for us. Tell us, Tommy, starting with Eileen Barton. Saturday night is the loneliest night in the Martin, week. Right. Saturday ah, night is the loneliest night of the week. That's Eddie Howard in, for sentimental reasons. I love you for sentimental reasons, right? <laughs> <laughs> Frankie Carl, oh, what it seemed to be. Frankie Carl was a big band leader before anybody on this panel was born. Tommy, you've got to tell our friends some of the Russ Colombo songs you're recording because I want to buy the album. I mean, I mean the CD when it comes out. Name one. Well, of course, I recorded the Prisoner of Love, Just Friends, All of Me. But I'm uh, working on a new one now with, uh, called uh, With My Eyes Wide Open, We're which just recorded on the radio right show. Right now for Mark Birnbaum, who was Mr. Ragtime, while we set up a little bit of music by Just Us. And uh, this was my theme song on TV for over 1,000 years, uh, Just Us. And uh, 1,000 years. We must get about nine letters a day hating me for changing it, but you know, you gotta be a little bit modern, you can't, you right? You gotta, you gotta shake it You gotta it get up. right up with the time, you, you gotta, gotta well, shake you're it there, you're right there. You gotta shake it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, down memory lane, and Mark is packing them in, they tell me. King of ragtime is great. King of wrestling. I am with you, wrestling through, I mean, wandering through memory lane. And Captain Albano, you're the, you're the host today. What do you want to ask us, say, well, of the Ventry guys, Brothers? What I want to ask him, Joe, is, first of all, the name of the guys in the band. And in, I'd like in, to know what your goal is. I mean, what you, uh, you Good know. question. Well, the rest of the guys in the band, we have Bob Polito, who plays the bass Polito, guitar. Right. Okay. We have John Laval, who plays the keyboards. Okay. We have Frank Lakewood on the saxophone. Terrific. John Caldwell is the drummer. And Peter Beckett is our guitarist. And Joe and Lou. That's and right. Joe and Lou Ventry. Oh. And your goal, your ambition as of this moment, gentlemen? To be as popular in the music business as is possible. <laughs> we were talking about stars who make 90 million a year. And when you're, I know you're, now you're probably close to 88 million. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> but how do you feel about the obligation, if any, to those who built you up? We do any charity work, any charity work at all, because that's, that's what it's all about. I can we, tell you what, what did I ask you before? If you would appear for multiple sclerosis or for definitely. cerebral palsy, this at any time. Like right. usual. Come Let's on. say you signed up today to make a movie. Many, many people have discovered from uh, our panel here for movies. What kind of movie would you like to appear in, gentlemen? Really, acting is something I've thought about. I don't know exactly. I mean, any sort of uh, show business thing is something that's interesting. Like, music is our life, but show business is such an interesting field. Just, it amazes me to watch you do what you do, because that, it's incredible to be able to sit there and control a show. Well, I, used to be, I used to be nervous and jerky, but I'm not <laughs> nervous anymore. <laughs> a little bit of Just Us, and then a big, big surprise finale. Just Us, a sample. Why do I sit at home and cry? Well, as I might say at a uh, moment like this, in fact, what I will say at a moment like this is, have we got a show for you? Have we got a segment for you? We got a 
segment right now, one of our highest rated uh, features or featurettes or vignettes or cameo sequences or segments, whatever you want to call it, it's known as the Billy Shepard and Judy Jordan Shower Singers, one of our more popular uh, segments, gets us one of our highest ratings. And I've got reason to believe that We'll come closer. Let's get chummy. Right. Good, I, I good. Like to be, I like to be with you because uh, somehow I feel like I'm with somebody almost my same height. Yes. <laughs> That's my, why we're on the show so much. My, my, right? my, mother, my mother told me never, never marry out of my height. <laughs> uh, you agree? I, like that. I love it. You, you think, I love that. You think I'm too handsome? You think I'm too handsome for my height? I'm not. Yeah, I, I, I really do, Joe. No, but I just want to say that I've, I get big reaction for this. I'm going to go to my desk right away and watch this segment, but it's called the shower sing, as we call it, kind of out of the shower no, into, into the spotlight, the spotlight. Yes. and many yes. of billy and judy's proteges through the years are now working i keep reading in atlantic city and las vegas signed with big record companies now this what was the result, result of, of this? appearances on your show and i've yeah. got reason to believe your billy, proteges too i've got reason to believe that uh, that florence nightingale began as a shower singer and, and lillian <laughs> russell <laughs> that's right and, and, and yes. Jen, jenny lind i put her on right <laughs> russ colombo no it, it's it's a lot of yep. fun and these are the stars of tomorrow and they've been discovered by billy and judy and at the piano mention this man's name i am cotton a young man from israel who is now a citizen here a marvelous musician mr cotton I am he just cotton. came back from Tokyo. Wonderful I'm going to go back to my desk and watch the show, and we're going to have three outstanding shower singers. Yes, we are. And, these, and they're working a, a big lather, right, on the, on the shower they're, they're singers. They're right? lathering up for stardom, right. Joe. No soap, right? Yeah. <laughs> have a good time. Have a Thank good you. Time. No, introduce the first one, then I want to leave. Introduce. Okay. Joe, we see 300 singers before we bring three to you. I know, I know. Joe, here's a young man that auditioned for us over at the Singers' Lounge at Beef Take Charlie's, and we all flipped, doing... A tribute to Sammy Davis Jr., Mr. Robert Mack. Yeah. Robert. I knew a man, Bojangles, and he danced for you. In worn out shoes. Robert. Beautiful, Robert. Robert Mack. Beautiful. Now, Joe, this is our seventh year, believe it or not, with you presenting all this wonderful new talent. And over the years, so many wonderful things have happened to them. And here's one, one young lady that has stardust all over her shoulders, right, yes. Judy? And only 11 years old. Yes. Your tie's older than that. You know yeah, that I bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this little girl did walk in, and, and uh, from this little, little person came this huge voice. And I know that fantastic things will be happening for her. It's uh, Alicia Stewart, everybody. Alicia Stewart. Thank you. 